What's going on everyone? Hope all of you are doing well. Welcome to Flashback, Flashback Friday. Um, so basically this will be a multi-video series where I talk about gaming consoles, some of my favorites. Now the Sega Dreamcast is by far one of my all-time favorites. This console I feel like was way ahead of its time and it was definitely unique in its own way. Yes, it was a disc-based console, but it to me it took elements from different consoles and became one console. You know, it was a disc-based game, you know. Game systems we have now are all disc-based. So at that time, you know, we were majority of those consoles that were out were strictly, you know, other than the PlayStation were cartridge based games and you know we got some really cool accessories i mean we got some keyboards and uh fishing pole light guns and just you know all these different controllers for all these different games that were being released now the games themselves is it's just crazy on the variety of games that we got i mean you know the, the games that stand out are games like crazy taxi and uh, Jet Set Radio, which are two personal favorites of mine. Uh, games like Power Stone, and of course Sonic the Hedgehog, which of course was one of the launch titles during its uh, launch. Now, the great thing about this console is that you can play four players. It had the four player port. What I also like about this console is that it's the first console to have memory cards that are literally like little, you know, little game game boys just about uh, little handhelds which i thought was really cool and not only that but they had a screen on them and when you plug them into your controller whatever game you were playing would have a really cool graphic on there and that's what i feel like made this console so unique was these accessories so i remember when the console first came out i remember me my brother my father and my sister we actually had walk to our local target to get this um, this was a console that we all wanted and at the time we only had one vehicle so we had to walk and make a trip there and it was worth it you know this console just the intro to it and you know just the hardware to it this square this small little square machine with four player slots and it's disc based was just so cool to see and then you know the the little uh dot that we get that balances and then does the whole you know dreamcast logo was pretty cool and of course you know other consoles would do their own little like introduction you know when you boot them up like xbox playstation of course was doing it and then um uh playstation 2 and a few other consoles of course would continue that that whole thing and to this day you know other consoles are doing it so I would say in a way both the original PlayStation and the Dreamcast are kind of what you know play pay, paved paved man I can't speak I can't think they are what paved the way to those um, you know intros but the game selection I thought was great um, you had a great variety of different games from ranging from sports games to uh, games that required the light gun to online uh playing and there's a lot of games that you know you were able to play online fantasy star was one of those uh titles i remember my brother having this and you know having the keyboard and you know just something that a lot of consoles didn't have at the time so it was definitely uh interesting to see during that time period and you know the dreamcast i feel like doesn't get enough credit and unfortunately the marketing and a few other reasons uh behind it just didn't really do too well and eventually sega decided not to come out with any consoles after that and it's really a shame because you know this console i like i said i feel like was way way ahead of its time i remember playing so many great games power stone is one of my personal favorites this is a really cool fighting game that basically, you know, you get these little gems and you can get these really cool, like, power-ups and you can get, like, uh, you know, cool accessories or suits or something like that. There's, like, I think a pilot who looks like a Power Ranger uh, once he gets all his gems and you can use his, you know, super ability and it basically gives him a costume. I think they all have, like, different costumes. Kind of similar to, like, Bloody Roar, 
but you had like one character who had like this little tank uh, once you got all your gems. It was definitely a unique uh, series of games because I do believe we got two uh, out of that series, Power Stone and Power Stone 2. And of course the launch titles, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, which was a great Sonic game, uh, very enjoyable and would eventually get a sequel. And then we had Crazy Taxi and Jet Set uh, Radio, which is an absolute favorite. And I do believe that one's getting a, uh, a remake. Now, of course, that would get a sequel, just like Sonic. Uh, the sequel would be available as one of, the, I believe, as one of the launch titles for the Xbox. Because once Sega decided to stop doing that, I think eventually they would uh, partner with, uh, you know, Microsoft, and uh, you know, release a lot of titles uh, for the Xbox, and I think a few other companies as well. Um, don't quote me on that, but. Yeah, just the Dreamcast is such a fun system. So many great memories and, you know, just the controllers themselves were unique. I mean, this console having a memory card that was literally like a small little handheld. And the one thing I love about this is that when you put it into the controller, you whatever game you were playing, you'd get like this really cool graphic on it. And I thought that was pretty neat. Of course, this is the first console to have memory cards inside the controller. Of course, Microsoft would continue that that you know fad fad uh, later on uh, when the Xbox came out. But yeah, I thought it was really uh, just a unique console. I mean, the controllers themselves were unique, and of course, you know you could tell those controllers would continue on in some way with the original Xbox. Um, but yeah. I wish I could say more about this console, but I don't want to, you know, I wouldn't be able to do a multi-series uh, video. But I just kind of wanted to talk, you know, give you guys a little introduction to this series and give you a little talk of my history with it. And just, you know, some of the things that I love about it. it to, to, to this day, I, you know, it's one of those consoles I would like to, you know, eventually complete the whole library. You know, eventually I need to pick up... A system and the system uh, itself was kind of similar to like the other um, consoles like six, Nintendo 64 and GameCube you know they would have other releases um, there was I think a Sega Sports release which was a uh, all-black uh, console and I think there might have been like an orange uh, Dreamcast out there. Now I know a lot of the uh, variants were uh, only available in Japan. Um, I know the GameCube had a couple during its launch. You had, I believe, there's the blue or indigo. There's the uh, black. Uh, there's the orange, silver, and I think that might be it. There might be a few other ones. Do not quote me on that. And then of course the Nintendo 64 was really well known for giving us, you know, different variants. I mean, we had basically red, blue, green, you know, uh, yellow. And then, of course, there was the uh, jungle, whatever they call it, the jungle uh, fever or fury or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I like the fact that this console had something that was similar to, like, the 64 giving, you know, buyers out there a uh, type of a variant that they want. Um, I would say the sports games, I feel like, were a little bit better on this console when they first came out. I remember playing some of the NBA games uh, quite often, probably more often than when the Dreamcast and, and uh, not, no, Dreamcast, man, I cannot think today. Um, I remember playing those more than, like, say, the GameCube. Uh, sports games or the Microsoft Xbox, you know things like that I just always found myself playing the sports games on the Dreamcast because they just seem to be a, a little bit better um, The wrestling games. I think we only got one out of the uh, console, which wasn't too bad I remember playing that game, you know a, a few times um, Just so many great games. I mean, you know some that I feel like were way ahead of their time um, but yeah just wanted to give you guys an introduction on this Flashback Friday for the Sega Dreamcast. Now this will be a multi-part series video where I'm going to focus on certain categories. Uh, so next Friday we're going to be talking about the games. Um, there are a lot of video games and things like that. Um, so yeah, pretty excited 
and I will also do a brief history um, before I get started with the games. Um, you know, give you guys a little history on the console's uh, release date and the release date for. Uh, well, not release date for the games, but, you know, with a lot of these consoles, North America tends to get, sometimes, gets more than other countries. And then other times, other countries like Japan will get more games in the library than the U.S. releases. So, I will be doing a little brief history on that for uh, next week's episode. So, yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in to my little introduction on the Sega Dreamcast for Flashback Friday. Can't wait uh, to can't wait for you guys to tune in next week. But with that being said, I am Film Talk with Mike, and until next time, we'll talk films. And remember, Sega.